In this section's activity, we set up basic external authentication for our Salesforce API and the calculator proxy. Then we'll call those APIs using a user from our authentication source. External authentication is handled through an authentication broker that uses basic authentication or references a third-party identity provider. After the broker is installed and set up on the authentication external page, then external roles, groups, and users can be defined on an authentication source. So to begin, I'm going to add an authentication source. Here on the external authentication page, I'll click New and create an authentication source. I'll call this Source API Course. And then for the identity provider type, I'll select Basic Authentication. Now this basic authentication is enhanced basic authentication. Atom controlled basic authentication allows you to create 200 users on the shared web server settings, but with this basic authentication, that limit is removed. I'll click save, and now I need to attach the source to the broker. I'm just gonna click and drag. Now I'll add the roles, groups, and users. We're only going to add two of each, but you can add more if you would like. So under my source, I will navigate to roles and add a role. This first one will be called administrator. And then the second role I'll call general. You'll notice when I make a change to the source, I get a prompt that I need to save and send to broker. I can do that now, or I can wait till the end. Under groups, I will add a group called developer. And I will select the role of administrator. And then another group called standard will be given the role general. Now to create the users, these are the actual people that are going to be calling the API. So for example, Mary and John could be added to the developer group, while Greg and Sue are added to the standard group. After the groups, are created, you can assign users to those groups. So under users, I'll add a user with the name Mary and an easy to remember password of 1234. I'll give Mary the group developer, which has the role of administrator. And then another user, John, Same password, 1234. But John is going to be in the standard group. All right, so all roles, groups, and users are created. Now I can save and send to broker. Now I'm going to add a plan for the APIs. An API that is deployed to a gateway must have at least one plan assigned to it. A plan is a collection of policies that set limits to API requests and link a valid API key to a specific API deployment. So under configure server, I'll select plans and then choose Create a Plan. I'm going to call this plan Unlimited APIs. Again, you can create additional plans if you would like to try adding different policies. But for our purposes, we're going to set everything at Unlimited. 
unlimited message size, rate limit, and quota limit. Now going to the deployed APIs, I'm going to view the APIs by gateway. And you can see that my API proxy and my service are both incomplete because I have not yet chosen a plan. So let me choose the proxy first and then search for a plan to add unlimited APIs. And I'll add that to the deployment. After clicking Save, that plan has been added, and now the status of the API, it has been sent to the gateway. I'll do the same thing for Get Prospects. And now both have the plan uh, assigned to them. Now, in order to call the APIs, ultimately, we need an API key. And API keys are generated by the application. So users of API management create applications that serve to allow another entity, which could be a business unit or a third-party application, to access the API. Now, applications can be created here within Atomsphere, but they can also be created through the developer portal. We'll see that a little bit later. I'm going to go to the Applications page. And here for my Broker API course, I'll click Add an Application. I'll call this application API Course. And I do need to provide an owner name and an owner email. Now this doesn't have to be a valid email address, it just has to match the proper email syntax. I've created the application, but there are no APIs subscribed to that. So I want to subscribe by clicking zero subscriptions and then clicking here, subscribe to an API. So both my calculator proxy and get prospects will be subscribed to this application. I'll click next. And here I'm selecting a plan for calculator proxy. I only have the one plan of unlimited. I can select a start date. And if I wanted to, I could also select a date when this should be disabled but I will take the default of do not automatically disable. Now I see the get prospects API service. I'll give that the same plan, same start date, and click finish. So now the API keys have been generated for both of those APIs. Now at this point, we are well on our way to enabling Mary and John from our authentication source to be able to access the API through the developer portal. But before we do that, we want to demonstrate another approach to authentication. When deployed to an environment with gateway authentication, APIs will default to API key controlled authentication. So we want to demonstrate how you can use the API key alone to call the API service. There may be times when a legacy application needs to pass just the API key, but not a username and password as part of the request. We've added a plan, we've added an application, and now we need to get that API key from the application. So from the Applications page, I'll click Two Subscriptions, and then copy the API key for Get Prospects and paste that into a text editor. I also need to get the full URL path. For that, I'll come to the Deployed APIs, View APIs by Gateway, and click View next to the Get Prospects API service. 
Here, under REST, I can copy the full endpoint path and paste that into a text editor. Now with the API key and URL path, I'm able to configure the request in Postman. So here's my URL. I've added the query parameter of type equals prospect. For authorization, there's no authorization required, but I do need to add a header of X API key. I'll do that to enter the key that I copied from the applications page. Enter the value here, click send, and here is my response. So no username and password required. Just by passing the API key, I'm able to consume the API. Now we're going to continue and reconfigure the authentication for the APIs to move from API key controlled to the external authentication source that we configured. The final step here is to reconfigure the authentication for the APIs. To do that, I'll come back to the deployed APIs and view the APIs by gateway. Now, when APIs are deployed to an environment with gateway authentication, they will default to API key controlled authentication. But we want to select our authentication source since we're using the external authentication provider with that enhanced basic authentication. So first for the proxy, I'll click API key controlled and select external authentication provider and the API course. Now I could here restrict by role, adding a restriction of administrator or general, but I'm not going to do that. I'll click Save and do the same thing for Get Prospects, my API service, selecting External Authentication Provider and Source API Course. Now we're almost ready to call the APIs using one of the users from our authentication source. To do that, we're going to obtain the user's API key by subscribing to the APIs by means of an application through the developer portal. We'll look at that in the next section. This video concludes now, but you can complete the steps yourself by following the steps as outlined in the activity guide.